All right, hello, this is 256K. Um, I'm going to be doing a quick walkthrough of Mana Loop 0.8 on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, right now I'm using it on my emulator, but it should be the same. Uh, I don't have the controls showing on the screen, but I'm going to be saying what controls I'm clicking when I click something. So hopefully, hopefully that's going to be clear for you. Um, okay, so let's start. We'll hit start. So now it starts, and the first thing you see is this screen. Now, the first thing you notice about Nano Loop is that when you start it, it starts playing playing automatically, and you don't you don't get to stop it whenever you want. Now, this is different compared to a tracker where you start, stop, compose, start, stop, compose, do all that stuff. It's kind of a back and forth motion. And Nano Loop is a lot more fluid. You basically compose on the fly and you can either do that live or just while you're working and then play it live later, whatever you want. So, Nano Loop starts with well, actually, Nano Loop has four channels of audio. Um, two channels are monophonic, one channel is polyphonic if you want it to be, and one channel is noise. Now, before we get into the channels and make, making sounds, uh, let me just show you the menu system because the menu system is how you navigate through everything and you really have to understand how that works to get to, to the flow of using Nano Loop. So, first thing we do is we hit the select button. So, when we do select, you see at the bottom here five different icons. Now, each icon represents a set of parameters uh, for the notes that are playing on the channel. And I'm going to go through each one of them and show you what they do exactly. On the top left, you see this half square. It's actually an R, letter R. And this is the R channel. Now you have R, L, S, and N, I think. Um, yes. Um, R and L are the monophonic ones. S is the polyphonic one. And N is the noise one. At the top right, you also see uh, 120. Now that's the BPM, basic stuff. So when we hit the select and we see this menu here, this is how we can navigate between all four channels. So when I hit up and down, if you look at the top left where the R is, you'll see that now it changes to the L, now it changes to the S, and now it changes to the N. So this is kind of how you go through them. So let's just start with the R, the first channel, basic channel, monophonic. And now let's look at the bottom row. Now you see I have this wave thing and the way you navigate between them is again while in the same menu where you navigate between the uh, uh, the channels, the tracks, the voices, uh, you hit left and right and then you can go left and right like this. So the first one is kind of like the side triangle one or like a speaker pointing to the left. Uh, this is basically your uh, volume and uh, envelope length. The notes, clearly marked by a note. The wavy one is the LFO. Um, this one I don't remember exactly. And this one is for the panning and shuffle. So let's just start with the notes because that's the most obvious and simplest way. So we click start again. Uh, sorry, not start. We click the B function, the B button, and then we go back to the grid while we were in this note. So you see when I go into B, now I have this menu it disappears, but I know in my mind that I'm in the notes menu. And the way I know that is when I hit a button here to actually put a note, you see a notes number actually, you see C, and then you have this little square at the top you know, that shows you the octave. So you can control the octave of each note and you can control the note of each note. And the way you do that is you hold down the B button, the button that you use to put in a note, and then you go left and right. Uh, Yes, sorry, uh, my keyboard kind of messed up. You go left and right to change the octave, 
and then you go up and down to change the note. So now I'm on E3, I believe. And then I can go hit another note and put a D. And then, I don't know, G, low, low G. Something like that, right? So now I want to control other parameters of the uh, of of the of each note. So I hit the menu again, and now I can choose a, choose another parameter to, to control. And you see, when I go left and right, you see that the notes now change to different look. Um, so that kind of represents the parameters that you can control on each page of the notes. So let me start with this one now here. So I hit G again to go back into the step function. And then let's pick this one. And then I hold B and then I control. So I hit left and right. Listen to the note. Now it's a place for longer. So that's basically the decay of the notes. And then when I go up and down, that's the volume. You hear like now it's very quiet compared to the other ones. And then short, now it's very long. Now we see it's very high pitched, so I want to go back so I can click the select button again, go to the menu, move back to the note, hit B, and then hold B down, and then go down the octave, like this. I'm going to hit select again, go back here, hit B again to go back into the step mode. And then I can control the decay of it, make it a bit shorter. Right, so next one, this wavy thing. Now this is an LFO. Um, there's a, a few ways you can use the LFO. The default way is just as a um, kind of like a, a pitch envelope. So if I go back here and I control this note, hold down again, B, and then go up, you hear that pitch bend? So that's basically what's happening. Imagine the top left is the start of the envelope and the middle square is the end of the envelope, like that little slope thing. So imagine that, that's how I visualize it. Imagine that making it like in drawing a curve between the two and then you can kind of visually see how it looks. So if I make it longer, it'll take a longer time to reach that square, right? Like that. If I make it very short, it just, it just drops like that. And this is kind of the way you would use to make a kick. Now the next one is the filter. That's that's it. I remember now. So the filter, uh, you basically have um, the cutoff and the resonance, and there's a few modes of filter. You hit start while you're in that menu to change the modes, and I'm pretty sure there's another way, but I don't remember exactly how. Uh, but we'll just start with that. So. Hit B again, go back into the step mode. So now I can hold down B and then move this. See, it changes like a bit more like a high pass. And now it's like a bit more resonant and, and harsh. Now it's not like a standard subtractive filter, it has its own kind of way and I, it's more FME, like this entire digital synthesizer thing is based around FM more than anything else. So you'll get weird like funky sounds like that. And then if you hit start again, then you can change the mode of it. And then you see it's very FME. Like it has a very distinct bell FM ping kind of sound. And then the last, oops, sorry. And then the last one, this is basically the panning. So, uh, I thought that was the padding. Sorry, my bad. I guess that's just a shuffle. So, 
it's a there's a there's a repeat and then there's also a shuffle I forget yeah so you hit the you hit the start to change modes so you hear now it's a delay I say shuffle but technically it's just a note delay so if I for example if I copy this put it here put it here uh, and I'll explain what I just did in a second and put this back here here now this note triggers almost at the same time as this one does and then if I hit enter I get repeats like that so recapping this little menu here so we have the envelope and and volume so decay and uh, decay and uh, and volume and I think you can also change it to a more of a um, attack stage rather than a decay stage but now same thing you hit the start button to change the modes so now I'm changing the modes And um, you, you see, I just added another mode for these notes, but we'll not get get into that right now. But you could also change modes. Always change modes with the um, start button. And then we have the LFO, which is also just like a pitch envelope. You could also make it be an uh, an actual LFO that's like a repeating LFO with the enter with the with the start. Sorry button and now you have that weird filter FME thing and then here you have the repeat and the note delay okay so you notice that now when I'm in this menu when I hit a button I control all of them instead of the note so that's the next thing when you're in this menu without hitting B again to go into the step mode uh, hit the select again to go back into this menu and at this point you can control all and this is really handy because of two things. First off, let's say you just want to have a specific style of note, like a specific sound, like a note and, and, and a specific envelope and a specific LFO on whatever notes you enter in there. So you could just enter in the notes quickly and then go back out into this menu and then globally affect this channel's properties for that specific page. But let me explain. Uh, oh, the second thing too is that if you have already changes between the two, so let's see, let's say, um, sorry, let's say you have this one here is very long, Let me get rid of this. like that, just keep it visual, okay, that's the last thing it goes, and then I go back here, what you do is you hold the B button again, uh, sorry, you hold the A button again, so A for all, you can think of, and then you can kind of control them and what's cool is that it's relative right so you see the big one it stays big and the small ones also shrink now of course if you go all the way down it'll resync and then they'll all move together like that so it's cool for notes too so notes you could do go down in notes go down in octaves lfos And all I'm doing is I'm holding the A button while I'm in this menu and I'm go and I'm moving with the arrows to control the parameters. Like that. Okay, so what next? Um Right, copy and pasting. Um, so you see I kind of moved some notes around a little bit, added some notes, removed some notes, so how does that work? Uh, so we go back into the note function here, and the way you do it is with the A button. So basically the A, whenever you're on a note, 
you hit A, it'll cut it, so it'll copy it and then remove it. So you can put it back, and then you can go put it again anywhere else you want. Now, let me just switch to the notes page so that it's a bit clearer with the, with the individual notes. Now, another little bit confusing thing about this is that, let's say like you cut this F here, and then you cut this C, but you want to put the F here again. If you do, if you do A, if you hit A again, it'll paste. So the last thing you, co you copied slash cut was the C that was here. So if I go here and hit A, it'll be the C, right? But I wanted the F, so I have to go manually, manually put back that F, right? Like that, and it still copied other properties from other pages, from that other C into it. So it's not, it's not great. So let me cut this, and I'll cut this, paste it, and then paste this one. So now, uh, now these two are exactly the same. So we said that here there was a C, right? So I cut this here, I cut this here as well, but now I want to put this F back. So what you can do is just hit the B. Now the B will place in a square whatever it was there last, regardless of what you have in your um, in your clipboard or paste bin or whatever you want to call it. So you kind you kind of have to get used to it. It's it's just part of it, and like I make mistakes all the time with this, and it is what it is. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is the secondary menu. So you see now when I hit select, you have this menu at the bottom where you can control all the parameters of all the nodes, but there's a secondary um, menu as well. So you hit select again, and then you have these weird icons here. So what are these icons? Now I don't know what all of them are, I know what most of them are, uh, but I'm just going to explain to you what I know. So the first one with these two arrows here, this is where you save a pattern per channel. So if I go to A, if I hit, sorry, if I hit B on it, and so I select it, instead of going into the note, like we do on the other menu, you know, like I have here, I hit B, and then I go into the individual note mode. Uh, whoops, sorry. Now I'm on this menu, and I hit B, and now I'm in a completely different menu. So what the hell is this? So this basically is where you save stuff, right? Um, I don't know if there's stuff already saved here or not. Um... I guess not. I guess that's just how it is. And it's, it looks different than on the Game Boy, that's why. Maybe that's because it's the demo. Right, because of the demo you can't save. Mm, okay. So, let's do that again. Okay, so here I am. And now, this menu has caused me a lot of trouble in the past because there's no confirmation message or anything and the way you save and um, load is very similar and if you don't know by heart you will make mistakes and you will overwrite stuff so it is what it is but the way basically the way it, it works is that you have the a and b buttons right so when you want to save something you hit the a button and down right so hit A and down. Now, obviously, on this menu, you're not going to see anything uh, because it's disabled. But usually, you hit A and down, and that's safe. So think of it as an arrow pushing to safe, right? Like like a floppy going into a computer, like a vertical computer for some reason. Floppy man, I'm old. Um, you put it in. Right, so down, in, the arrow pointing down, in, so you're saving it that way. And when you want to load it, load it up to the to the pattern, I just set it up. You load it up, so you hit A and up, and I've been saying A all this time, right? I don't even remember if it's A or B. I think it's B, actually, sorry, not that. B. You 
hit the B and down to save, and then the B and up to load something. Now you see, I just loaded this number two here, but because nothing was saved, now it's empty. So if I go back and I write some notes, something like that, and then go over here, right? And then I want to save it, but I can't save it. But let's say I want to save it, I hit B, and then I go to an empty one. Normally these are grayed out, like the zero here, so to show you that it's an empty space, and then you hit B, B, and then down. And then let's say you want to load something else, you hit the B and up, and now it's empty. And you see I'm on the R, like if you if you look at the far left here, you see it, it goes horizontally, right? It works like that. So each of those channels, you have 16 slots to save. And each of those 16 slots is in one bank, and then you hit enter. And then you have the banks. And I don't remember on the Game Boy how many there are, but there's like a bunch of them. There's a lot. And all those are empty. So you can save a lot of stuff. Uh, and then here you can name stuff. Let's say this one is... Uh, I don't know. ICL 47, I want to name it ICL 47. So this bank, I named it ICL 47. And then I can, oh, what did I do? Did I freeze something? No, no. <laughs> I think I worked it. That's my emulator at work. Yep, let me restart. Regardless, this is the save menu, and let's just move on. So then you have this. Now, I believe that this is song mode, and the way it works is basically you can, you can basically tell the sequence. So this is like a sequence, kind of, going left to right, and you can tell it which patterns that you saved in the previous menu to play. Let's say this one three one four four one two two one. Now if I go here, you see it's one three four four one two two one or something. It basically plays from these ones, the numbers. Here. And you can do that for each channel. So the third one here is basically a, um, I forget, yeah, okay, so this one you can change the order of playback, so if you hit on this three dots symbol, if you hit enter, you go into the random mode, otherwise um, if you hit B and uh, left, you go into this ping pong mode. So you see it goes back, it starts, and it goes back, like that, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only two modes, so you have ping pong or back and forth, uh, sorry, random or back and forth, ping pong, they call it ping pong, or just the regular one. Uh, yes, okay. Now this one here, uh, you get to control, actually, you know what, let me put in notes first, because there are some functions here that are dependent on notes. So this is the ch noise channel. So you see what I'm doing here? Um, I'm hitting the A button on this menu, and I'm going back and forth, and it's moving the um, the notes. Now normally it would move in a more 
sensible way. Oh, I think it just go every 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 step goes back one. So that's why there's like this weird overlap at the top, but every step goes back one. So you can keep going like that. And then I believe, yeah, okay, and if you hit the B and then go down, you reduce the number of steps. And then you go back up to increase all the way to 16. And the last one is related to the tempo. So you can increase your tempo here. And then if you hit down, B and down, uh, you can divide. And this division is per channel, not per project. So you see these ones are running at a quick speed, but this one here is running slower, divided by four actually. And you can divide all the way down to eight. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the basic navigation. Now, let me just go and reset everything, okay? I don't know what else I could cover. Um, the polyphonic channel, the S, we could kind of give it a shot here. So let me put a note, okay. So here you see, now I have C, now I hit B, and then I hit left. Now I can control the next notes. So here that's like a two notes. Do like a basic triad with an octave up. Kind of like that. Now I want it to be longer. Um, and if I want to control the root note and the octave of the root note, I go back left, left, left to C. And then I have to go down. There's no way to just jump off this in this mode. So now let me cut it, paste it, and then put it. Uh, another thing to notice is that the first note is an actual note note, like note value, so it's a C, C sharp, D, D sharp, all that stuff, but the rest are relative. So, so this is a 3, this is a 7, and this is, and it just basically means whatever the note is, but an octave. 5, 4, 7, 8, 9, and then A because it's an hexadecimal, so A is 10, B is 11, and then um, is C uh, is uh, the octave of the clock. And then it revolves around again. Oh, I think you could, you could go two octaves up actually. I didn't know that. Another thing I need to explain is that this is how you do a shuffle. So when you go into this menu where you, you said you can do a note delay or a, a note repeat, if you go into the menu at the top and hit the A and press up, it automatically adds delays to all to these two columns here. So this column and this column here. And that's basically a 16th shuffle. Now this won't be as apparent right now. 
could do is maybe just do a quick kick, because that's always a fun thing to do. So this is usually how I do a kick on that one. Um, I hope that was informative, I hope I didn't babble too much. Uh, 